the study of Revelation, it has been, you know, uh, uh, relatively uh, easy to be understood, and still it is, but there are some explanations and some signs and symbols and, and uh, things here that, that are going, we're going to look at a little closer. And so we want to back up to chapter number 12 and give you just a few more thoughts on chapter number 12, and you get this in your mind. Uh, the seventh trumpet has sounded in chapter number 11, uh, verse number 15 through verse number 19. And then we find a, a sign, a wonder. A great, John sees a great wonder in heaven. And we see in this great wonder in heaven, we see there are seven persons presented or personages. Uh, not, uh, not uh, you know, exactly one person altogether, but there are seven personages presented uh, in this chapter and, and part of chapter number 13. And so we, we read this and you say, well now, uh, how can all this take place? Now listen, now I'm going to promise you something. There's a whole lot of things that I don't understand, but I do believe the word of God and I do take it for what it says. Now when, when John says here, uh, there appeared a great wonder in heaven. That's exactly what I believe John saw was a great wonder that appeared in heaven. And this is seven things uh, in here. And we mentioned Sunday night that that uh, many times in the book of Revelation, there are, there are uh, uh, seven uh, things presented. And we saw in chapter 2 and 3, there were seven churches that were presented. Chapter number 5, there was a seven-sealed book that, was, uh, that we've read about. Uh, chapter number 6, we've seen the, the beginning of the seals that we've, uh, that we've already touched on. Uh, chapter number 8, we saw the seven trumpets. And then uh, uh, chapters 12 and 13, we see these seven personages. But in chapter number 16, there are seven vials. In chapter 17 through 19, there are seven dooms. And chapter 21 and 22, there are seven new things. So God deals in the number seven because that's his number of perfection. His divine number of completion is the number seven. So we see that all throughout the book of Revelation. And that has some significance, a lot of significance in, in meaning that God's plan is going to be finished. And, and we're the seven churches. We're in the last church, uh, the church of Laodicea. We're in that final church, and that's going to be, when that's over with, it's over with. And when these seven seals, seven trumpets, and, and uh, the seven vials of the wrath of God, and the seven dooms, and uh, when all this takes place, when it's done, it's over with. And then we, we dwell on those seven last things, the seven new things that we find in chapter number uh, 21 and 22. And those seven things will be eternal things. And we'll know, the, you know, we'll know what it is, but it'll be eter those seven things will be eternal things that you and I uh, will experience when we, get, uh, you know, when we get to that point. And friends, surely that's not going to be that far away uh, when we uh, begin the, uh, you know, when the rapture takes place and the tribulation begins, and that's what we're studying on now is the tribulation. And when it's over with, and believe me, people here on earth will be glad when it's over with. Uh, they'll, they'll wish the day, they'll, they'll wish the day that they heard the gospel and didn't get right with God. Those that are saved will wish the day uh, that they turned their heart and life to the Lord Jesus. They, they'll, they'll, uh, would, would, re would, if they could, they'd retrieve those times when they had to write the, the time to get right with God and the opportunity to get right with God. We're living in a day where, friend, I'm afraid there's a lot of, a lot of people that are, are deceived. And uh, I, I, we, don't, we believe here at Gables Creek Baptist Church, we believe here that if you get saved, that you must know you're lost. Amen? You must be under conviction of the Spirit of God. There must be a desire in your heart to be saved. But there's a lot of preaching, and I've been noticing here as, as of late, there's been a lot of preaching over the last 10 years, and I, uh, you know, there was a time when I, when it was going on in a part of a ministry that I was with, and I just, you know, I'm, I wouldn't have nothing to do with it, but, it, but uh, any sort of easy believism, I'm afraid, has, has gotten a lot of people into the notion that just because they said a prayer, that it, you know, that it uh, saved them, and listen, I'm telling you, you, I've heard all kinds of stories about people meeting in, you know, uh, people even meeting in the restroom and, uh, you know, talking and not even seeing one another. Look, you asking, are you saved? No. What's that mean? And they tell them, and, and uh, in three minutes' time, you know, they've, they've prayed the sinner's prayer. Friend, I'm telling you, it's not just it, a sinner's prayer is only effectual if someone is under conviction. 
if they know they're lost. If they know they're lost, then they can be born again. And I worry about folks that, you know, that they say, well, I'll get saved when I want to. No, friend, people will get saved when God's dealing with them. And if God's not dealing with them, they're not going to get saved. And there'll be a lot of people in the tribulation that wish that they had, uh, you know, that they had uh, gotten salvation instead of just a, a profession. There's a lot, of, a lot of churches that will deem you saved if you uh, sign your name on their church roll, friend. That's not what saves a sinner. It's the blood of Jesus Christ, and it comes from conviction of sin, repentance of sin. And that's the message Jesus preached was a message of repentance. And but there's going to be me, you know, untold millions of people that will go through the tribulation in what we're studying in, and they'll go through there, uh, and and it'll be on their mind continuously uh, that they had the opportunity, but now it's too late. And then, friend, after that, it, it's it's eternity with the devil in the lake of fire. What a sad day that's going to be. But you and I tonight can rejoice because what we've studied about. And what we are studying about are things that are going to happen on earth that we're not going to be a part of because we are the, the Lamb of God. We are the, 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 you know, the, uh, the bride of Christ. And when all these things are going on, you and I will be in the presence of the Lord. That, listen, that ought to stir our hearts to try to get those that don't know the Lord to come to know the Lord. You must be born again. It's a plain, simple fact. You must be born again. And, you know, I'm very careful if I'm dealing with somebody about their salvation. Uh, you know, I, I, there was a time in my young ministry when I uh, seriously didn't know any better that, uh, you know, that I'd tell people, you know, here's how you need to pray. Well, God would help them to pray. If you'll tell them, if you'll just tell people, you just pray and ask God to save you, 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 let, him, you let him do the saving. And, uh, and they pray. Then at, at, which one, which one was it that was over here? I forget their names. Lucas. Lucas was down here the other day. Uh, his little brother got saved over here all by himself. But Lucas was down there, and I was talking to him. I said, son, you just pray and ask the Lord. And before I got that out of my mouth, that boy's praying. Now, I have no idea what he said, but I heard him pray. He I, that, is, that is how you get saved. If you know you're lost, then you can get saved. But if you don't know you're lost, and, and I'm, you know, I, I'm, I'm so afraid of people that, you know, that have uh, come under this easy believism preaching today and, you know, have, have, have think that everything's just fine, yet they never trusted Christ because they've never known these laws. But you and I are not in that position tonight because we have been born again. Now, in chapter number 12, it starts out with these seven personages, and we're going to try to clarify just a little bit what this is about. Now, the, the uh, first one is of this is chapter number one of uh, chapter number 12 verse one and there appeared now listen a great wonder in heaven john sees a great wonder he sees a great sign and all this points to something uh he saw a a woman clothed with the sun and moon under her feet and upon her head a crown of 12 stars what does those 12 stars uh represent what are those that's the uh that is the the uh, uh, number of, of the 12 tribes of Israel. There was 12 of them. And so he saw those 12 stars, and she being with child cried travailing in birth in pain to be delivered. This is the nation of Israel. Where did Jesus come from? He came from the nation of Israel. Uh, there are some that would say this is the church, but, but Jesus didn't come from the Gentiles. Jesus came from the Jewish people, and he was a Jew. And so this represents... Uh, the the uh, the nation of Israel and where that Christ came from. So she she been was pained to be delivered. This is the first person here is this woman and who is that person? That person is is Israel and uh, as it speaks of she been with child cried travailing in birth and pain to be delivered. And then here comes the devil. This next one this that red dragon here. Uh, is the devil. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his head. What are these crowns? What are these uh, uh, things that he is seeing upon him? This, this is a sign of authority. This is a sign of administrative rule. Uh, that's what this is. And, and this old dragon, this old devil, uh, one day, as we know that he has now the power of the prince of uh, of the air, that he is the prince of all of that that you can't see. He is not in the third heavens, neither are his angels. 
Uh, neither is his stars that we see here in just a moment. And that's what these stars are. The demons of hell are not in heaven, any, or are not in heaven, but they're, they're around this earth. Remember what uh, uh, Job said? He, you know, when the devil went before the Lord and said, and God asked him, what are you doing walking here for, uh, you know, around the earth? And let me touch Job. He said he'd been around the earth, been walking to and fro upon the earth. And, he, and so that's where the devil's uh, domain is today. He is around you, and he's, you know, they're there. And, and what are they doing? They're trying their best to discourage Christians. They're trying their best to keep lost people lost. And they're trying their best to stir trouble anywhere they can because we find out that the devil knows that his day is short and his, the time of his, uh, you know, uh, when he's through down here on this earth, it can't be long. And so he knows that. Now we see that this red dragon, he has the, uh, uh, all the authority is going to be given him in the tribulation period of time. Uh, this red dragon is, is, is going to be a, is, is an, an evil and wicked person. And you know that. But when he has his way on this earth totally, when the Spirit of God is gone from this earth totally, he's going to wreak havoc upon the earth like no man has ever known or no man has ever seen. He, it's going to be turned over to him, and he'll have some cohorts that we'll see in chapter number 13. And, and uh, when those two beasts come together and they form that unholy trinity, as that is an imitation of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, when they form that... that uh, uh, unholy trinity, they will, there will things happen upon this earth. And friend, the whole idea is to stamp out God's people. And you know, when in the Garden of Eden, when uh, you know, Satan came to Eve, what was he trying to do? What, he was trying to destroy the seed of the woman. He was trying to, to, to uh, get her to where she would you know, sin and that, therefore that would make it uh, that would make it impossible for her to get to heaven. So when all that took place, uh, there was the devil fighting, and we see him there in, in the book of Genesis starting out. And all through the scripture you can read where, there's, where Satan has fought and where, he has, uh, where there's been a battle going on between good and evil from the beginning of man's days. There's been a battle going on. And who's been raging war against who? It's been the devil against, uh, you know, against the Lord. But who's going to win? We already know the answer to that. He's already defeated. The battle's already won. The devil has not a chance of ever over... Now, he thought he was. I believe the devil probably thought when Jesus was crucified on the cross of Calvary, although he fought that because he knew that if, if sacrifice was made for the sins of many, he was going to lose. And him being the defeated one that he was, he thought after that, well, I'll keep him dead, but he couldn't keep him dead uh, because Jesus raised himself from the grave. Amen. So we know, friend, tonight that the battle is already won and the battle's the Lord, and he's the one that, that fights and wars against the devil. Uh, so here we have Satan, and there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great dragon, having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his head, and his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven, and he cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered, for to devour her child as soon as it was born. Years and years ago, friend, in heaven, the devil thought he was bigger than God. He thought he was greater than God. And, and when it was all said and done, God licked the devil and threw him out of heaven, cast him out of heaven. And all the demons of hell uh, were cast out, you know, all the demon, all the angels that were with him uh, that became the demons, they were cast out with him. And so they are, you know, as the best of my understanding, uh, they are the stars of heaven, not the twinkly kind you see, but many times angels are considered, you know, are, are pictured, we already saw, as stars. So here, the, uh, here these angels are, and the devil's got the third part of them, uh, the third part of, of, the, of the stars with him, and they're just ready. To, all through these ages, they've been trying to devour the man-child. But guess what? They've never been able to do that, and they never will be able to do that. Now we see the, the woman has travailed. The devil is waiting to devour the child, and she brought forth a man-child who was to rule all nations with, uh, with a rod of iron, and her ch child was caught up into God to his throne. And the woman fled into wilderness where she had the place prepared of God that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and three score days. What time period is this? This is the time of Jacob's trouble. This is the last half of the tribulation. 
And so we see that the devil, uh, you know, was ready to destroy the man-child as he always has been, this man-child being Christ Jesus. And we know that because it said he would rule all nations with a rod of iron. That's who that is. Nobody else could do that. So we, we know that is Christ. And since the beginning of time, the devil has tried to, to uh, uh, you know, to kill the Lord and, and do away with him. But we know that after his resurrection, what did he do? He ascended to the right hand of the Father. And so he is, he is trying to kill Christ as a, as a person uh, never could happen. And so we see now that there is another personage here. Verse number 7, this is the person of, of, the, of the, uh, the archangel. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought in his angels. And prevailed not, neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world, he was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now has come salvation and strength, and the kingdom of our God, and the power of his Christ, for the accuser of our brethren is cast down, uh, which accused them before our God day and night. Friend, the devil is defeated. He's a murderer. He, he had, there, I have nothing good to say about the devil, except his day is coming. Now, does he ever bother you? Now, I don't know if the, I, you know, I use that phrase that, you know, I, I've, I've battled the devil all day long. But I, now, I, I'm very careful about saying that anymore. I've battled his influence a whole lot of times. But, but if you say you, if everybody battles the devil, then we're, we're almost making him as God being that he would be omnipresent. But he is not omnipresent. The devil cannot be. Now, his influence through his demons uh, you know, are everywhere right? because there's so many millions of them. And, but, but uh, you know, I battle the influence of the devil every day. Now, you say, well, have you ever battled with the devil? Like, well, first of all, I'm no match for the devil. And second of all, I believe if the devil's going to uh, attack somebody, I believe he's got bigger fish to fry than this country preacher. Amen. I believe he's probably got somebody else out there. But, but we battle the, the demons of hell. And, and guess who is doing the battling for us? It's God's angels. It's, the, it's Michael's angels. They're the ones that will do the battle. And, and I, in studying this, I've, I've become uh, to, to the belief that there are more angels good than there are bad. I believe that. But I believe that we all have them around us. And you say, wait a minute, preacher. Well, no, I just think about it. If the devil's out there in his influence with his angels, what, what do we have? We have the Spirit of God. And I believe that we have angels with us. And I could tell you a lot of stories about people that's experienced angels. And I've told you a couple uh, of my own experiences where uh, something would happen. And, you know, I'll tell you this again just because it's on my mind and I'm thinking about it. My son and I were uh, making a long story short. I'd picked him up from school and I had to go back by work. It was pouring the snow. And I, I, at that, you know, at that time, I had to do something at work, so I stopped by there and done it. And I said, "Okay, son, let's go home." I mean, it was it was snowing hard; it was putting it down. And so we got out on the interstate, and the old car I was driving, ever I I tell you how bad it was. Uh, every time I just I, I never would check the oil. I just wait the oil light come on and go put two quarts in it because that's what it needed every time. Now I got tired of getting out there and checking the dipstick, so I. I just wait till oil light come on. I go dump two quarts in it, and I go another 200, 300 miles, and oil light would flicker on. I'd stop wherever I was at and put two quarts of oil, kept all kinds of oil in the car, and that's that was you know that's the way it was. And so that day, that particular day, it was pouring the snow and it was cold, and we got on we got on 40 coming east, and uh, we just got on 40 right there from River Ridge. We just got on the interstate, and that thing it died on me. I mean, it died to death. It started knocking and things started happening. And I said, son, this is it. Uh, She's going to lay down on us today. And so <coughs> uh, it quit. I pulled over. Now, this is before everybody had a cell phone. I pulled over and uh, he said, what are we going to do, Dad? And, and Brian, I said, son, I said, we're going to start walking. I said, it ain't, you know, it's, it ain't far down here to the exit. I said, we're, we're, we're in good shape. We'll just walk. And I had no more got the car stopped, and we'd had that little conversation until there was a car pulled over right in front of me. And uh, I thought, well, let's see what's going on here. I went up to the car. This fellow said, do you need a ride? I said, well, yeah. He, he said, where are you going? I said, up here to Swan and Oil. And he said, well, get in the car. Now, listen, I'm not in for getting in the car with just anybody. 
you know, you know, I'm I'm kind of suspicious. But I but there was no fear whatsoever in getting the car, me and my boy getting in that car. So he and I got in that car, and uh, we went down to exit 59. I said, I said, uh, uh, you know, you can let us out here. He said, No, I'll take you. So we went down the end of the ramp. We turned right. And we got across the bridge, and we got to the store. I said, look, it's slick up here. I said, just, it's just about a, you know, maybe a half mile up here to the house. I said, we'll be up there in 10 minutes. I said, you let us out here. And he said, <clears throat> he said, are you sure? I said, yeah. And I look around, the feller's gone. Now, you say what you want to say, but I'd never heard of that fellow, never seen that fellow. You say, well, he was just a passerby. Well, go ahead. That's all right. Make excuses for me, if you will. But I've always thought God sent that along uh, in the form of an angel. God sent that along to help me. Now, friend, you, you say, well, now, preacher, that's just a little, little out there. Well, you, you might have missed something in your lifetime if you think back about some of the things that might have happened to you. Maybe a near accident that you don't know how you, uh, how you missed that near accident. Maybe your car should have flipped over four or five times, but it didn't. Uh, uh, things like that that sometimes we think coincidence may not have been coincidence at all it may have been the angel of the Lord helping you it may have been an angel uh, around your vehicle there was a, a preacher, I'm trying to think of his name I can't think of his name but anyway he, he pastored a church up in New York and another fellow went to visit him now he believed in angels this preacher believed in angels and he got up there, and he was sitting, uh, you know, he was sitting with him, and they needed to go somewhere, and, <clears throat> and the, the preacher said, come on, buddy, let's go. And so he said he got out and said, traffic everywhere. He said he got out in that big old boat car he is, and, and uh, you know, the preacher riding with him, he didn't know what was going on. He said he got out in that big old boat car he is. He said he pulled up to the road, and he said, Lord, put a put an angel on each fender, and here we go. He said he stepped on the gas, and out in traffic he went. He said, cars sliding, blowing their horns. He said, nothing ever hit him. He, 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 said, he, he said, I depend on that. Lord, he put an angel on each fender, and here we go. And said, he hit the gas, and out in traffic, he went. Now, that's, that's, that's kind of testing, I believe, a little bit. But if you ain't got no better sense than that, I believe God would take care of you anyway. Uh, Brother Duane Whittemore, a fellow that I uh, preached here before, a good cousin of mine, a great man of the Lord, he, was, he, he tells this story. Uh, he tells this story about him when he worked at the... Uh, Tabernacle Children's Home, and he was out one night. If I'm telling this story right, if I'm not, he'll hear this and he'll correct me, and I'll correct you. But he was out with a bunch of young ones one night, and they'd travel all over the eastern United States and sing and raise money for the children's home and and uh, get those children out. He'd he'd have a van load. He'd if his 15 pastor, he'd have 15 plus whatever else he'd cram on there, and uh, he'd take them somewhere. Been to our church many times, and and his he'd take. He said one night he got out. And, and uh, he was driving down the highway, and everything just perfect. Said everything just fine. And said, the Lord said, pull it over. And uh, he said, well, Lord, everything's just, the Lord said, pull it over. He said, okay, Lord. He pulled over on the side of the road. He said, well, now what? Said, the motor's running good. Said, there ain't no noise. Ain't nothing happening. Said, he got out there, and he said he, he uh, walked around the thing, and he kicked it and, you know, kicked the tires and looked at it and tried to find something leaking and said, what in the thing wrong? He said, well, what, what this is all about? He got back, I believe he got back in the van and sat there and started to start the engine and the left front tire blew off, blew off the rim. See, he said, he said, that's an angel. He said, that's an angel that got me off of there and protected me because if it had been out in traffic, as, you know, as the traffic was and that left hand tire, that's the worst one to blow out on a vehicle is the, left, the front left because you'll pull that way right into traffic. Now you say, Preacher, do you believe all that? Yeah, I believe every bit of it. You say, well, I don't. Well, amen, you just go ahead through life thinking that, and I'll go ahead and enjoy the blessings of the Lord because I believe in things like that. I believe God's that big. And when we find that Michael and the archangel are fighting with Satan, we know who's going to win. The devil is no match uh, for, uh, you know, for, uh, the Lord, for the Lord and the angel. Now, let's look at some things about the devil real quick, and I'm going to be through. We see that in John 8, 44, we see that Satan is a murderer and he's the cause of the murders that go on in this world. We see in 1 Peter 5, 8 that Satan is a roaring lion walking about seeking whom he may devour. Uh, we see that in Genesis that he, he is the one that did the first attack on the first parents. The devil did it in the Garden of Eden. Uh, he fought, as we've done said, he fought Christ every minute while he was on this earth. 
Uh, he even tried to bribe him and offer him the whole world. Uh, a little, I think that was a little dumb because Jesus had it all anyway, but he offered him the whole world. Uh, we see that he was trying to destroy Christ when, uh, when remember when he was two years old, they said go out and kill all the, all the, uh, the baby boys two years old and under. Who was that? Uh, that was an attack of the devil trying to destroy Christ. He's the cause of all unrest and all unhappiness in this world. Don't blame it on the Lord. Amen. It's the devil's doings because that's what he's good about. And he is that bloody red dragon that we see here in the book of the Revelation. Now we look at the one more here, the, the, this uh, verse number 5. And she brought forth a man child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. And her child was caught up into God and to his throne. And the woman fled into the wilderness uh, where she hath a place prepared of God that they should uh, feed her three, uh, th three, feed her there a thousand two hundred and three score days. And I left out something there, so I'm going to go back to it. Where is there, where is this, uh, are the children of Israel, where are they going to flee to? In the, the, the Bible says that they're going to flee somewhere. And they're going to be, they're going to be hidden somewhere uh, for this part of the tribulation. There'll be a remnant still there. But they're going to flee to the, uh, and, and the best I can study is the, the city of Petra. Uh, that is a fortress that is, you know, that is made out of stone. And it, it is a place where uh, they tell me that it would be impossible about it to, to be attacked. And so uh, it's good possibility that's there, that is where they're going to be hid uh, for, for those 2,000 years. Friend, I'm looking uh, for the Lord to come back. And I'm looking for Jesus to set it all right. And I'm looking for the day when he comes back and puts the devil where he belongs. And that's where, where he's going to be through eternity in the lake of fire. And friend, what a day that's going to be. But listen, as we study on and we, as we've slowed down here a little bit and covered some things that, you know, that might be, uh, you know, that might be a little confusing if we don't take our time. Just remember, God in his dealings is dealing with the nation of Israel and he's dealing with things that are going to come hereafter to this earth after the rapture has taken place. So uh, the next thing we're looking for is what? The rapture of the church and, and to be with the Lord forever. But until that day comes, friend, let's be faithful to serve him. Let's do our best to get those people that we know that are lost and bring them to the Lord. Father, we thank you, Lord, for the word of God tonight. Blessed, I pray. God, I pray that you'd help us, Lord, that we would, uh, Lord, just uh, be diligent about the word of God, be diligent about our studies, be diligent, Father, about living for you and serving you. And help us, Lord, to let our light so shine before men that they might see our good works and glorify the Father which is in heaven. God, go with us through the remainder of the week. Lord, bless us on the coming Lord's Day. We'll thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. Anyone?